to Ben Cost Match Fishing. Today you find me on my way to a new venue, a uh, venue I fished a lot, uh, but I'm not actually fishing. I'm going to meet a, another special guest um, who's got a, a couple of sort of secret methods up his sleeve that he's uh, kindly agreed to share with us. So it should be quite interesting. Um, I'm just pulling up in the car park now. Well, I'm just going down the dirt track to the venue. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit wet, but uh, yeah, should be a, should be hopefully a bit interesting, something a bit different. Uh, it's got a very interesting method, he reckons. So yeah, let's have a look. All right, so I've come down to Timberlands today, Timberland Fishery in Essex. Um, I'm gonna, oh, well, I've met up with Phil Spry, bait tech fellow bait tech angler. Um, he's got a bit of a special method which he's going to be sharing with us today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera over to Phil and let him explain the method to us. Good morning. Morning Phil, how are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad at all Ben. Right, tell us all about this method then Phil. So yeah, I, back in December it was a, a winter tip that I posted on my on my Facebook and through through the Bait Tech. Yeah. Where it was, I named them the Winter Red Burgers. The bread um, burgers. Bread burgers, yeah. So basically, pretty much how conventional bread bread fishing rolls. Bread punch on the canal. Roll your slices out, uh, microwave them, roll them out, take the air out of them, and then I use different types of um, you know liquids, flavourings. Right. right. Join them together, and then I punch them out, ten mil, eight mil, depending on what sort of size I need. Right. The difference is, is that I um, I put them in the freezer. Okay. So I either freeze them the night before, or a week or so before. And two two main reasons why I do that is so on the actual so I put them in the freezer, they're made, they're ready. On the day pleasure fishing or match angle match fishing, I just take them out out of the bag, bring them to the venue, and during that time obviously they start to fall out. But what through through trial and error is especially in the winter you want the security that your bait's going to be out there you know your bites are a lot longer a uh, lot harder to find so you want the security that you you, you know that the bait's going to stay on the hook or or hair rigged it's not taking in so much water because it's still in theory defrosting right and, and it still floats does it, it still pops up how do you make it, it pop pops up? up or it sinks i i, I just use it as, as a, from a, from a sinking point of view right. um that one floats <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so what also like coming to Timberlands is um, as you can see the far the far far banks 25 20 25 30 meters away yeah and it's ideal for dobbing yeah and obviously we're not going to be able to reach that from a pole so I actually use the method on the Wagner okay and the extra bonus is using they're frozen like dobbing on a pole which dropping your lift and you're dropping they don't come off the hook right. i'll get seven or eight casts out of these on the way up okay before i feel the need to change it and how many have you caught so far today i've been fishing just over an hour i've had five right i've had um four on the waggler and one on the bomb still pretty cold it's taken a lot of rain over the last week or so isn't it so yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's got a good color on it it was very clear a couple of weeks ago it certainly looks very nice yeah there's not much. We've seen a bit of activity across the far shelf. So, but, you, um, so you're chucking across the far bank there, Phil, yeah? Tight to the reeds. Yeah, literally tight as we could possibly get. Clipped up on the bomb. I'm even clipped up on the waggler just right. to make sure I'm hitting that. Still with the bread burger? Still with the bread burgers, yeah. I've not tried anything else. It's um, I had a couple, couple of sessions during the Christmas and New Year when we could get out. And um, yeah, that's all I fished. Well, what we'll do, Phil, is uh, when you reel that one in, when you're sort of baiting up, uh, if you could show us the little setup that you do, yeah, no problem. And how it works, that'd be great. Yeah, no right, let us know. Talk, talk, talk us through your setup, please, uh, Phil. So, direct main line straight to um, an uh, X Safe Guru bomb. Yep. With a, uh, it's a four pound, straight to a fourteen hook. Yeah. A little hair rig. Okay. Don't need to uh, go too light because you're fishing tight to the bank. You want a bit of strength to. Uh, What's that spike there? Straight on the spike. Yeah. Um, literally pick up you know they, you can feel them you know they, they, they're, they're still quite firm right it's not like the way you're punching the bread and you're popping you know straight from a fresh slice but they're very firm literally needle straight through the middle same time I choose an additive I've got a couple here that I, I yeah. like to I favour um, only apply it to one side 
bit pretty much like I'm making a sandwich, Ben. Right, got it. Um, and then through again through trial and error, best thing is to let it set for a little bit. You know, right. give it give, at least give it thirty seconds to a minute. Yeah. Turn it over, get the air to both sides. Let, yeah. let the um, let the liquid sort of take its toll. Sort of absorb into it. Yeah, and then I again through trial and error the um, the guru punch. I find it's quite quite good because you as you press into the bread, yeah, you want that bit of firm, the, the bit of firmness on top. Got it. To sort of bind them together. I've got it. So uh, yeah, it's great. Yes. And what are they like? What, what size punches are they? Got six mil? No, I use that's an eight mil. Eight mil. Ten, eight, and six. It, 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 Brilliant. Depending on much, Brilliant. Yeah. They look great. <laughs> Go on then. Shall I, shall I say you catch one? Beautiful. <clears throat> the whole of YouTube are going to know about your bread burgers now. You can lose your edge. Let's get them out there. <laughs> so where else do you fish apart from here, Phil? I fish all over, really. I, I, I like to go to Puddle Dock, yeah. South End Farm. I, I, I loved my canal fishing. I was born and raised on canal fishing. Um, I tend, depending on time of the year it is really Ben, I do a lot of feeder fishing up and around Milton Keynes Way. Okay. Go to Black Black Horse and um, Willen Lakes after the Big Bream. I've not been feeder. there, okay. That's great, I mean, they're, they're hard waters, you know, they're acres and acres and acres of water there. Yeah. Um, always, always do a couple of sessions on the Thames. Yeah down at Teddington. Lovely. So it, it all depends on the time of the year. Yeah. It's a bit, mainly, of, a, it's bit mainly, of variety. Mainly commercials. Yeah. But I like to, I don't sort of one trick pony. I just want to. Bit of everything. You've got the gear. You've got yeah, to, got as well. To, uh, you've <laughs> got to be able to put it to practice. But uh, yeah, it's, I've had, it was a lot more active on the Waggler because you're, you're kind of like casting around looking, looking for the fish, you know. It's, um, okay. And how deep was you fishing on the Waggler with the bread, bread burgers? I've got two, two Waggler set up. Right. Uh, pretty much very similar. Yeah. Um, you take the float into, what's that? <coughs> 16 inches. Right, yeah. Just under 16 inches. Okay. And then I've got another one slightly slightly deeper. So no shot down the line, just? No, pretty much it's bent. It's like pellet Waggler fishing. Lovely, yeah. It's, it's no different from fishing the pellet Waggler. Yeah, yeah. You're just constantly, I say that's... Dobbing around with your bread. Just dobbing around with the bread. It's and they eat it on the splash, do they, or hanging it there? Pretty much. Well, yeah. Some some bites have been. It's always within a minute. You you like instant like. You know they come to the noise. A couple of times when I fished here, so Christmas and New Year, literally instantaneously. Really? Wow. Yeah. Sometimes I switch to the maggot. Yeah. And go down to a single maggot here. Just okay. To, You're still catching carp on that. Still catching carp. You get a lot more, a little, lot more knocks. You know, the, or just the, this place is full of roach. Okay. Full of roach. The lakes here are really good. They've done a lot of work to it. It's 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 very lovely. It used to be very very overgrown, but uh, Gary that owns the venue has has done, has done some lovely lovely work to it. It's, it's, it seems very lovely. It's a great place for people to come and uh, young young you know young kids trying to get into fishing. Yeah. They sit up on that lake there and um, catch 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 fish all day long. Yeah. Bless it. Oh, it's an Olympian. <laughs> <laughs>
Fish on. Oh. oh. Came off. Came off. See how quick that bite was. It was a great bite. Yeah. So it's it's obviously just catching their eyes and it's catching them the eye of those carp. Yeah. It's not you don't wait long for a bite when it's And that's on maggots or bread that one, Phil?
So let me just zoom in there, Phil, two seconds. Yeah. As you can see that. Yeah, see that yeah. perfectly, yeah. Yeah. Use Right, Phil, so we've come to the end of the day. Um, how, how's it gone? Not, well, not what I expected. Look, I've caught fish. You can't, you know, that's what we come to do. We come to catch fish, even as a, as a pleasure day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm happy with my, happy with my start. Obviously, most, most, most venues you start off pretty well. I came here to catch on the bread burgers, and I have done. Uh, very early doors on the Wagner and the Bomb. Then it sort of dried up, as you know, um, and we, I found myself hunting around for bites. In the end, I had to result going, coming off the Bomb, putting on a small hybrid, really scaling down on the hook size and, and a double maggot. And I've managed to nick one quite late on. But overall, I'm not disappointed. I, I, you know, these are, in, in my eyes, I believe in them. I put, you know, very confident in what they do. I'm not disappointed. And I don't think, you know, I, I, I do recommend it. Certainly, I know, we sort of, you know we're going to start coming out winter now, but we're not really match fishing. But they're, they're, they're something to think about in the future. Yeah, I think they're a great little, great little well, thing. It's something to have under your belt, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Something to have in your locker. Exactly. You saw about the, the whole constant casting with the, with the wagon. Yeah. And I'll get five, six casts. On the, on the same one. On the same, on the same, on the same burger. Yeah. So uh, much more resilient. Yeah, much more, much more. And it just gives you that that confidence of when you're fishing in a batch or you know you just give your baits out there a lot longer. Then in your mind you think, well, my baits, my, my baits are still on the hook, it's safe, it's secure. And just wait for that big fish. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's have a look at what you got, Phil. Okay. So. Final, final result for the day. Six carp. Yeah. Small F1 in there. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, good, good stamp. You know. Oh God, their ice cold. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's been minus two all day, so not being funny. If you can come and catch a few fish on a cold winter's day, using something that you've obviously made at home, your own little method. Yeah. Then it's got to be worth it, hasn't it? It is. It's all a bit sporty in the day. Of course it is. Of course it is. No. Yeah. Well, thanks ever so much, Phil. It's been, no at all. been great seeing you, and hopefully we'll get some more footage in the summer. Excellent. Nice one. Cheers, Phil. Yes, thank you.